She had an affair during my deployment and got pregnant. When I returned, she wanted a divorce and full custody. I, 32M, never imagined I'd be sharing this story, but here I am. I'm a Marine Corps officer currently stationed in Okinawa, Japan. My wife Melissa, 30F, and our two kids, Tyler, 8M, and Zoe, 5F, have been living back in the States while I finish up my 18-month deployment. We've been married for 10 years, and I truly believed we had a rock-solid relationship despite the challenges that come with military life. Melissa and I met in college. We were both studying business, and we hit it off immediately. She was smart, ambitious, and understood my desire to serve my country. After graduation, I enlisted in the Marines, and she supported my decision wholeheartedly. We got married shortly after I completed basic training, and for the first few years, everything was perfect. When Tyler was born, Melissa decided to put her career on hold to be a full-time mom. It was a decision we made together, knowing that my military career would require frequent moves and deployments. I was grateful for her sacrifice and did everything I could to support her and be present when I was home. Zoe came along three years later, and our family felt complete. Despite the challenges of military life, we always made it work. We moved several times for my career, and Melissa took it all in stride. She made friends easily in each new place and got involved in the military spouse community. I thought we were a team, facing every challenge together. This deployment to Okinawa was supposed to be my last overseas assignment. We had plans for me to transition to a stateside post afterward, giving us more stability as the kids got older. Melissa seemed excited about the prospect of settling down and possibly restarting her career. Last week, my world came crashing down. I got a call from my sister Abby, 35F, who lives near my family. Her voice was shaky, and I could tell something was seriously wrong. She hesitated before dropping the bombshell, she had seen Melissa out on what was clearly a date with another man. Abby went on to explain that she had been noticing strange behavior from Melissa for months. She was going out more frequently, being secretive with her phone, and leaving the kids with Abby or other friends more often than usual. Abby had suspicions but didn't want to worry me while I was deployed without concrete evidence. The night before she called me, Abby had been out to dinner with her husband when she spotted Melissa at a cozy table in the corner with a man she didn't recognize. They were holding hands across the table and looked intimately involved. Abby couldn't believe her eyes and confronted Melissa as she was leaving the restaurant. Melissa initially tried to lie, claiming the man was just a co-worker, but under Abby's scrutiny, she broke down and admitted the truth. She had been having an affair for the past six months with a guy named Brian, 34M, who worked at her gym. Apparently, they met during a fitness class and things escalated quickly. I was blindsided and devastated. I immediately called Melissa, my hands shaking as I dialed the number. When she answered, her voice was defensive and cold. She tried to downplay the affair, claiming she was lonely and it just happened. I reminded her of all the sacrifices we had both made for our family and my service to our country. We've moved multiple times, I've missed birthdays, holidays, and milestones, but I always remained faithful and committed to our vows. Melissa's response left me speechless. She said she wanted a divorce and was planning to move in with Brian. But the worst was yet to come, she told me she was going to seek primary custody of Tyler and Zoe, claiming that my frequent deployments made me an unstable presence in their lives. I was furious that she would use my service against me like this, especially after all the support I had given her over the years. The past week has been a blur. I've been trying to process this betrayal while also dealing with my duties here in Okinawa. My commanding officer has been incredibly understanding and is helping me arrange emergency leave to get back home and deal with this situation. My mind keeps going back to all the signs I might have missed. Were there clues in our video calls? Did her letters become less affectionate over time? I'm second-guessing every interaction we've had in the past six months, wondering how I could have been so blind. But my biggest concern right now is my children. Tyler and Zoe are my world, the reason I put on this uniform every day. The thought of losing custody or only getting limited visitation due to my job terrifies me. I've contacted a lawyer who specializes in military divorce cases. He advised me to gather as much evidence as possible of Melissa's affair and document all the time she left the kids with my sister or others to go meet Brian. I'm also worried about the impact this will have on Tyler and Zoe. They're too young to fully understand what's happening, but they're not stupid. They'll know something is wrong, and I'm scared of how this will affect them in the long run. I've always been proud of my service, of the example I thought I was setting for my kids about duty and sacrifice. Now Melissa is trying to use that very service to take them away from me. It feels like a betrayal not just of our marriage, but of everything I stand for. I'm trying to stay focused on my job here, but it's incredibly difficult. Every time I see a picture of my kids, I feel a mix of love and fear, love for them, and fear that I might lose them. I'm counting the days until I can get back home and fight for my rights as a father. I know the road ahead is going to be tough. Military divorces are complicated, and custody battles even more so. But I'm prepared to fight with everything I have to remain an active part of my children's lives. They need their father, and I need them. Any advice from others who've dealt with infidelity or military divorce would be greatly appreciated. I'm feeling lost and scared of what's to come, 
but I know I have to stay strong for Tyler and Zoe. They're counting on me, and I won't let them down. Update 1, it's been two weeks since my last post, and I feel like I've aged years in that time. I was able to get emergency leave approved and flew back to the States to deal with this mess in person. The 14-hour flight gave me too much time to think, replaying every moment of my marriage and wondering where it all went wrong. Walking into my house was one of the hardest things I've ever done. The place that once held so many happy memories now felt tainted. Evidence of another man's presence was everywhere, a jacket that wasn't mine hanging by the door, unfamiliar toiletries in the bathroom. Melissa had moved most of her things out already, leaving the house feeling hollow. My reunion with Tyler and Zoe was emotional, to say the least. They ran to me as soon as I walked in the door, and for a moment, everything else faded away. I held them tight, trying to memorize every detail of their faces, their smell, the sound of their voices. They were confused and upset, especially Tyler who's old enough to understand that something major is happening. I did my best to reassure them that both their mom and I love them, even if we won't be living together anymore. But how do you explain to an 8-year-old and a 5-year-old that their world is falling apart? I met with my lawyer the next day to discuss strategy. He's a former JAG officer who now specializes in military divorce cases, and he didn't sugarcoat things. Given Melissa's infidelity and the fact that she's living with her affair partner, we have a good case for me to have primary custody. But my deployments and the possibility of future overseas assignments complicate things. He advised me to push for a temporary custody agreement while the divorce proceedings are ongoing. However, things got even more complicated when I learned that Melissa is pregnant. She claims the baby is Brian's, but given the timeline, there's a possibility it could be mine. I'm devastated all over again and angry that she put me in this position. The thought of her carrying another man's child while we were still married makes me physically ill. My lawyer is pushing for a paternity test as soon as possible. As if that wasn't enough, I've also discovered more about the extent of Melissa's deception. She opened secret credit cards in my name and racked up thousands in debt paying for hotels and gifts for Brian. My credit score has taken a massive hit. I'm working with the credit card companies to dispute the charges and have filed a police report for identity theft. It's surreal to think that the woman I trusted with everything would do this to me. My sister Abby has been my rock through all of this. She's helped gather evidence, including text messages from mutual friends who knew about the affair but didn't tell me. I'm hurt by their betrayal too, but trying to focus on the bigger picture. Abby's also been keeping an eye on the kids when they're with Melissa, making sure they're being properly cared for. Melissa, for her part, is now playing the victim. She's telling anyone who will listen that I was emotionally distant and forced her to seek comfort elsewhere. She's painting herself as a lonely military wife who was neglected by her husband. It's infuriating to hear these lies, especially knowing how hard I worked to stay connected with her and the kids during my deployment. But my lawyer advised me not to engage and let her dig her own hole. I'm staying with Abby for now and trying to spend as much time with Tyler and Zoe as possible before I have to return to Okinawa. We've been doing normal things, helping with homework, playing in the park, watching movies together. But there's an undercurrent of sadness to it all. The kids keep asking when they can come home, and it breaks my heart to tell them I don't know. The uncertainty of what will happen with custody is eating me alive. I'm exploring options to request a transfer back to the States, but it's not guaranteed. The idea of being thousands of miles away while Melissa potentially turns my kids against me is unbearable. This whole situation has shaken my faith in everything I thought I knew. The future I had planned for my family has gone up in smoke. But I'm trying to stay strong for Tyler and Zoe. They need me now more than ever. The road ahead is long and difficult, but I won't give up fighting for my children. They're the reason I put on this uniform every day, and I'll do whatever it takes to remain a constant presence in their lives. I just hope it's enough. Update 2, another month has passed, and things have somehow gotten even more complicated. The temporary custody hearing didn't go as well as we'd hoped. Despite the evidence of Melissa's affair and questionable behavior, the judge granted her primary physical custody with liberal visitation for me. His reasoning was to maintain stability for the kids in their current school and community while the divorce proceedings play out. I was gutted by this decision. It feels like I'm being punished for serving my country. The judge seemed sympathetic to my situation but said that the children's need for stability outweighed other factors at this point. My lawyer is confident we can push for a more favorable arrangement in the final custody agreement, but that could take months. The paternity test results came back, and the baby Melissa is carrying is indeed mine. This has thrown another wrench into the proceedings. I'm struggling with mixed emotions. On one hand, I'm devastated that Melissa cheated on me while pregnant with our child. The timing suggests she must have already been pregnant when the affair started, which adds another layer of betrayal. On the other hand, I'm determined to be there for this baby despite the circumstances of its conception. Melissa tried to use the pregnancy as leverage, suggesting we reconcile for the sake of the children. She showed up at Abby's house one night, crying and saying she'd made a huge mistake. For a brief moment, I felt a flicker of our old connection. But then I remembered all the lies, all the betrayal, and I knew there was no going back. I shut down any talk of reconciliation immediately. The trust is irreparably broken, and I won't subject myself or my kids to a toxic environment. 
Brian seems to have gotten cold feet now that he knows Melissa is carrying my child. He's distanced himself from her, which has sent Melissa into a tailspin. She's been calling and texting me constantly, alternating between tearful apologies and angry accusations. One minute she's begging me to come home, the next she's threatening to make sure I never see the kids again. I've blocked her number and I'm only communicating through our lawyers now. I've started therapy to deal with the emotional toll of everything. It's helping me process my anger and focus on being the best father I can be despite the circumstances. I'm also looking into support groups for military parents going through divorce. Talking to others who've been through similar situations has been helpful, even if it's just to know I'm not alone in this struggle. My commanding officer has been incredibly supportive through all of this. He's working on getting me reassigned to a base closer to home so I can be more present for my kids. It's not a done deal yet, but it gives me hope. The thought of missing more of Tyler and Zoe's childhood is unbearable. The hardest part of all this is seeing the effect it's having on Tyler and Zoe. They're acting out at school, having nightmares, and Tyler has started wetting the bed again, something he hasn't done since he was four. I'm doing my best to reassure them and maintain as much normalcy as possible during my visitation time. But it breaks my heart to say goodbye each time, not knowing when I'll see them again. Zoe asked me the other day why I don't love mommy anymore. How do you explain adult problems to a five-year-old? I told her that sometimes grown-ups change and can't live together anymore, but that both mommy and I will always love her and Tyler. I don't know if she understood, but she seemed comforted for the moment. This journey is far from over, but I'm taking it one day at a time. My kids are my motivation to keep pushing forward, no matter what obstacles Melissa throws in my path. I have to believe that truth and justice will prevail in the end. Until then, I'll keep fighting, for my kids, for my rights as a father, and for the future we all deserve. Update 3, 6 months have passed since my world imploded, and I'm cautiously optimistic about the future. The final divorce and custody hearings concluded last week, and the outcomes were more favorable than I initially expected. Thanks to the mountain of evidence my lawyer and I gathered, including Melissa's credit card fraud, witness statements about her neglectful behavior, and documentation of her erratic actions during the pregnancy, I was awarded joint physical custody. We'll have a week on, week off arrangement once I'm permanently stationed back in the States. Until then, I'll have extended visitation during my leave periods and holidays. Melissa didn't take the ruling well. She had convinced herself that her status as the mother would guarantee her primary custody. Her lawyer had to physically restrain her from charging the judge's bench. This outburst only served to reinforce the court's decision about her mental state and ability to co-parent effectively. The baby, a boy we've named Noah, was born two months ago. Despite the circumstances, I was present for the birth and have been an active part of his life. It's bittersweet, bonding with my son while navigating the end of my marriage. But Noah is innocent in all this, and I'm determined to give him all the love and support I can. Brian is completely out of the picture now. He couldn't handle the reality of Melissa's pregnancy and bailed shortly after my second update. Last I heard, he transferred to another office in a different state. Melissa tried to reconcile with me again after he left, but I stood firm in my decision to divorce. My transfer to a stateside base finally came through. I'll be stationed just a few hours from where the kids are living, allowing me to be a consistent presence in their lives. It's a weight off my shoulders knowing I won't miss any more major milestones. The road ahead is still challenging. Co-parenting with Melissa is a constant struggle, as she's bitter about the custody arrangement and often tries to undermine my relationship with the kids. I'm documenting everything in case we need to go back to court for modifications. Therapy has been a lifeline through all of this. It's helped me work through my anger and trust issues, and given me tools to help the kids adjust to our new normal. Tyler and Zoe are doing better now that there's a consistent routine between both households. Looking back, I never imagined I'd be a single father of three at 32, navigating divorce while serving my country. But life rarely goes according to plan. I'm grateful for the support of my family, my fellow Marines, and even strangers on Reddit who offered advice and encouragement. To anyone else facing infidelity or a military divorce, stay strong, document everything, and never stop fighting for your kids. The journey is hard, but you're tougher than you know. Semper Fi.